Well, hey, I'm Brad Sugars. Welcome back to The Apprentice Billionaire. You know, this is the podcast you come to when you're that billionaire in training. You're looking to become mega wealthy and you're looking to learn from those who are on the path, on the way there, doing it, doing it well, doing amazing things out there. Today, we go to San Diego. Techne is the architectural firm we're going to chat about. Abai Schweitzer, you're the, you're the man behind this, buddy. How you doing? I'm doing great. How are you, Brad? Fantastic. Now, look, as a 37-year-old guy who got into business, what age did you get into business for yourself? I got into business when I was 29 years old. 29. What made a 29-year-old jump into business for himself? Because most people are scared of going into business for themselves. Yeah, I would agree with that, but I was scared of uh, being an employee the rest of my life. And <laughs> that fear was much greater than going into business. Actually, that's so moment- true. I From see the that all I the time. I, I, I knew I didn't want to work for somebody else. So Once you graduated that, architectural scary. school at what age then? So how long were you working for? I graduated in 2006. And I worked from 2006, about mid-2006, till uh, 2009, end of 2009. So three years working for other people. Dive into business for yourself. I love it. See, that to me is the absolute ideal behind The Apprentice Billionaire. It's what we want to do. Today, you're 37 years of age. You built the business quite massively. We'll talk about all that sort of stuff in just a moment. But what what is your main goal out of having business for yourself? Was it to work for yourself? Was it to to make the money? Was it the freedom? What was your major thing of having your own business? But initially, it was just not to have to answer to somebody else who, who mainly I disliked, to have some freedom to do the things I wanted and to have more money. But that's transformed now into wanting to have more time to have the experiences that I really want in life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it's real interesting when people sort of start into business for themselves – it's like, dang, this is, you must have a bunch of guys you went through college with that didn't start their own business, yeah? Yeah, all of them. And how do you, well, all of them, how do you relate to those guys? Do you still, do you find it harder to relate to them now that you're running your own shop or what's the feeling? I, I do. I, I find it hard because they're, they're in a different place and their ambition is different. And we oftentimes can't carry a meaningful conversation because they think I'm crazy when I describe the things I want to do. You know, buddy, you are crazy and crazy in a good way. This is the thing that a lot of people don't understand that I want you to remember this, Abby, because this is really important. The people that listen and watch this podcast, they're crazy like us too. They want to be in business for themselves. And that's one of the reasons I do this is because I want other young people to realize that you're not crazy that you want to go into business yourself. It actually makes sense. How do you, if, if you get a young person to ask you, should I go into business myself? Do you, how do you respond to them? I'm sure you must have had that question. Certainly. I mean, I try to find out a little bit more about why they want to be in business, but generally my answer is yes. Hmm. What would you say to someone listening to this podcast who's like a little bit scared right now of it? The Being scared is normal, right? You can call it being anxious if you don't want to get into that scared mindset. But find out, start by getting a clear vision of what you want the business to contribute to your ideal life. Yeah. Write out a vision of what your ideal life is. And you can start by writing out just one day. I do it five years ahead of time every year. And think about all the things you might want to do. What's your health? What's your finance like? What's your family? And what's their situation like? Where do you want to be? what experiences you want to have every day. And I find that that pulls me towards it. And once you get that really clear vision, such a strong magnet that you'll, you'll find that the daily actions you have to do to get there, even if it means starting a business. You know, I'm going to All bust open a little like bit of your story here because I people don't understand. You moved to San Diego like a dozen years ago, 50 bucks in your pocket. Now you're running a multi, right. you're running a, one of the most profitable architectural firms. You get four weeks actual vacation a year, not even running the That's business. Correct. Got your dream home, your dream car, your dream house. Your wife's got her business. You guys are killing it out there. And and I think you, you're, tr- I, I hate to say this, buddy, but you're underplaying your success right now. You're underplaying the, the, the power of what you teach. And, and so that's why I want everyone listening to this to understand. Vision is really important, and, and you are so clear on it. Take me back through that thing of what you just said there about you do it five years in advance because most people don't put the time and energy into being real clear on where they want to go. Yeah, I found initially that it was all I, I just wanted to work because I wanted to pay my bills, and I didn't want to stress about going out to eat 
or having a nice beer, which I enjoy very much. I think you do too, Brad. So initially, every now and again, buddy, covered, every now and again. <laughs> every Initially, it was just to cover the basics, but then quickly I realized that that was quite easy to do, right, if you're dedicated and if you're if you're smart and consistent. Hang on. Those then three I words thought, are important. I, dedicated, smart, and consistent. Those three words are vital right. to everyone listening today. I mean, consistency being, I think, one of the most important ones because you have to do it over and over and over and over, the small things. So then after that, I realized once I started associating, this is key, with people who seem to be enjoying their lives much more than I was, that that's what I wanted to do. And that expanded my vision. So then I thought, well, why am I just striving to get the basics? Why don't I strive for my ideal life, for the ideal experiences? And through many peers and through learning and, and reading, I found a system that works well for me, which is to create a narrative of my life with with certain structure five years ahead of time. And that's usually on my birthday because I love that day. I never work that day. It's the day I get to dedicate you know, fully for myself. And I describe what my health is like, what my family's like, where I'm going to be. A few years ago was in Switzerland. Right when I started my business, I wrote five years ahead that I would be in Switzerland and be driving the Alps. And sure enough, four years after that, not even five years, I was doing that. But the clarity is really important. I really spent time on it. I researched what hotel I'm going to stay at. I researched where I'm going to eat, where I'm going to have nice beers, everything. The more detailed you make your vision, the more real it is and the more pull it has to get you to do that. You know, that's crazy, crazy accurate. And I, I've always stated it this way. If you don't know where you want to be in five years, you're already there. You getting real clear on exactly where you want to be. And this is where people say, I want to have a nice car. Well, okay, tell me exactly the car. What is it exactly? What color is the interior? Absolutely. What color is it? What is the license plate? Go buy the license plate today for that car you're going to have in five years time type thing. And that, and that is brilliant. Now, tell me about Switzerland. That was obviously a dang good trip. Absolutely. So I, I went to Switzerland for about 10 days, I think two weeks, actually. I took my mother to Switzerland because it was her dream vacation, too. And I was able to do that, obviously, through through the business. We stayed in, in, in Bern in the middle of Switzerland. We drove all over Switzerland. We went up on the highest peaks, which was scary, but a nice challenge. We ate a ton of good food. Uh, we explored all the areas that I told myself I would explore. And when I was doing that, Brad, I didn't even realize it. Only later... A few months later, did I open up my vision statement from a few years back and realize that exactly, exactly what I wrote about? You know, it's crazy. I remember losing one of my vision boards. I, I must have done it when I was like early 20s, and I lost it. I couldn't find the dang thing. I ended up finding it. It had slipped down behind the back of one of the shelves at, at, when I was moving office. I found it like six, seven years later, and I ticked off every single thing on it, even though I didn't see it there every day. Creating a vision board, creating a real clear vision is of vital importance to create sex. Now, I want to go back to that. You took your mom on her dream vacation? I sure did. I actually took her on two dream vacations the last two years. Dang. Dude, I, I remember when I first ever got real money, and, and I went and took my mom and dad to the to the car place, and my mom had never owned a brand new car in her life, and I took them down, and I said, Mom, pick whatever car you want. Dad, pick whatever car you want. And my mom's standing there panicking, like, son, can you really <laughs> afford this? And I'm like, Mom, I can afford 10 of these. What do you want? I, I think that I love that you do that stuff. Now, let's get back to business stuff, because I want people to learn some of the business things you've done. What are some of the things? Now, you you uh, started with a coach a few years back, Coach Carrie, and she's a rock right. star. We all know that. She kills it. She makes sure her clients do amazing things. Now, by the way, your wife was the one who met her first. Tell me a bit about that story because I think that's important for people to realize when you're ready for coaching, you're ready. That's right. So I'm not sure how my wife met Carrie, certainly through her effective uh, prospecting, but she actually invited me to go to this little seminar that Carrie did and I probably made some sorry excuse, like I'm too busy. And my, my wife went. And, yeah, I'm and too being, busy to get more successful. Don't uh, don't take me, right. honey. <laughs> that shows how smart I was back then. Yeah. My wife went, and, and she's incredibly smart. And she told me, look, I think you should meet this person. It's who you're, who you're looking for as a coach, because you told me you wanted a coach. And that that's all I needed. I met with I met with Carrie, and I, I started. It was It was just straightforward. Now, here's, here's the interesting about. thing, though, because you were so clear on your vision, 
you worked your tail off, you were consistent, all these things, but you needed some strategy to, to switch it up, yeah? Absolutely, because I had never done that. I had never built a business. I don't come from a family that has built businesses. I didn't have many friends who had built businesses. I was completely in the dark, very yeah. motivated, very eager, but not very sharp and, and without the right tools. Yeah, and I remember the coach facilitates that. The first time I ever started in business myself, I think the greatest thing is I was young enough and naive enough to just believe oh, I can just do this. I don't even I don't need to learn anything. And gradually I learned, hey, <laughs> all this stuff that I don't know is actually going to kill my business if I don't start learning it. What do you think? Do you think you had to switch your mindset from being an architect to being a business owner? No doubt. But I think the biggest switch that that I did, Brad, was I was really an employee of that business. Right? Mm. And I was a really good employee that I did everything really well. But that was the problem that I did everything. Yeah. And I never had any time to do anything outside the business because I was doing everything in the business. Yeah, it wasn't really a business. Had, it was a job for Abe. Abe had the best exactly. job in the world, and he worked for the craziest boss ever himself. <laughs> that's right. The most that's demanding right. boss and the best boss in the world. It's it's crazy that way. So Absolutely. switching that up, building the team now. Obviously, building a team is really important. What are some of the top keys that that you would teach everyone about how you've gone about building great people for your business? Sure, I think the hiring process is key a systemized hiring process mm -hmm. to make sure that by the time you're face to face with somebody, that, that that's a qualified candidate. Mm -hmm. But before that, you have to plan your team. You need an organizational chart of what your, your business is going to look like. So you know what pieces to fill. It's funny, right. you know, Abhay, what, you did it so amazingly well for your life. And then Carrie got you to do it for the business. What's the business look like in five years time? What is that going to be? Exactly. What's the org chart? What's the people? What's the jobs? Who's exactly. doing what? All that stuff. The moment you got clear on it, now you can put a plan together for it. That's fantastic news. Um, exactly. And important to that is you have to have an, uh, an ultimate job description for yourself. And mine doesn't involve working very much. <laughs> and that's exactly as I want it. You know, it's crazy. When I first start coaching business owners, I say to them, I want to know two things. Number one, what date are we going to finish the business by? When is the business going to run without you? And number two, how many hours a week do you actually want to be working right now? Is it five days a week, seven hours a day? Is it three days a week, four hours a day? What is the actual number? Because you know, you can read Tim Tim Ferriss's book, The Four Hour Work Week. You can read the the Five Day Weekend. You can read all this stuff, but unless you have a plan to get there, it is not going to happen. Absolutely, Brad. When I started working with Carrie, I was working six days a week, about ten hours a day. Now I work about thirty hours a week. So hang on, you've halved your number of hours. What's happened to your income right. since that time? I think it's gone up about four hundred percent. So all these people out there, uh, you know what, uh, I mean, because if, if you were to say that to a normal person, right, hey, I've halved my working hours and I got 400% more money, um, what do you think the average person's response to that would be? Oh, they think I was lying or that I was crazy. <laughs> that's why I find those conversations difficult. Yeah. And, I, need, but, I need to talk to crazy people like you. Yeah, that's right. See, apprentice billionaires will go, well done. Apprentice billionaires go, that's fantastic. Yeah. Apprentice billionaires, those of us on the road to the billionaire status understand that that is the goal. It's not the opposite way around. So that's fantastic news. Now, one other thing you had, you, you mentioned to me earlier that you had to really focus in on was celebrating. Tell me more about that's that because right. I think this is an important lesson for a lot of people along this journey. Absolutely. Oftentimes when you're in business, you're just, you're grinding. We use that term, right? You're just in it. And every day you're, you're, you're busting ass and you never stop to take account of what you've done, right? To pat yourself in the back. To Trust me, I credit. did that for years, years. Exactly. I just worked my ass to the bone. <laughs> it was like, I remember photos of me in my early 20s. My God, I was skinny as a rake because I never ate. I never did anything. I just worked all day. And, but then you, you tend to lose perspective. And for us, when we celebrate, every time I celebrate, it's like you're you're getting a little taste of what your ultimate life is like. Yeah. And you're also pausing to say, hey, this is why I'm really doing it. Yeah. I'm not working to work. I'm working to celebrate, to have these experiences. And it's also reward. It's a way for you to build camaraderie with your team. They love celebrating. I took my whole office to Mexico last year. Every year we take a cold trip like that. And that's really what it's about. We're kind of reaping the fruits of 
of all that hard labor, not just working, 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 and never enjoying it. I, I think there's a lot of people that are thinking, I want to come work for you guys. I want to come work for you guys and have that Mexican trip every year. You know, the, they were hiring. Yeah, yeah. I know you're hiring. You've got to keep hiring. You're getting more clients. You're building the business. It keeps working that way. You know, from $50 in your pocket to millions of dollars a year, taking your staff, taking your own dream vacation, these are all important aspects for people to see, hey, if, if Abe can do this, I can do it too. Tell me a bit about that because I want people to really understand that this isn't just because you're a miraculously genius. Because I know for me, that one of the reasons people love following me is because as soon as they listen to me, they realize, hey, he's not actually that much different to us. Tell me a bit about that because a lot of guys you went to college with and girls you went to college with who graduated, they're not doing this. Is it because you're such a genius? What's the difference? You know, I, I tell my wife I'm a genius, but she doesn't believe that either. I think <laughs> you, it's you did mention earlier she is smarter than you, so we we both understand that one. True, yeah. <laughs> she is, she is. I think well, there's many keys to that. One is to set up a structure so it's not dependent on you. And this is where systems come in, right? And anybody can implement systems because you don't have to most of the time even create them. Somebody else has figured it out. You just have to find that out. And associate and bring on board your team, people who compliment you and who are better than you. You don't have to do all the work. You just have to coordinate that all that work gets done and implement a system that can run itself with or without you. Yeah. So it's not dependent on you being a genius. There's two things you need to do, though. You need to be persistent and consistent. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. Head down, tail up, do it, do it well, consistently. I remember like what you just mentioned there remind me of uh, Henry Ford's quote, the smartest business person is the one who hires people smarter than themselves. I, I know that's always been my key to success. It's like build a great team, they'll build a great business for me. But he, I, I want to congratulate you first and foremost, because A, the gumption to go into business for yourself at 29, you know, most people just won't do that. And as you know, that's the case. I think the second thing I got to congratulate you on is actually understanding that getting help is not a, I mean, I don't know how to put this out, maybe you can give it better words than I can, but a lot of people, when I say to them, you need to get a coach or you need to get a mentor or join a group that will help you and help you grow, they kind of like, they think that that's admitting failure. How would you word that to someone? Because I, I, I think it's the smartest thing in the world to do. It, absolutely. One is I think people let their ego get in the way of them making money. And the quicker you can get over that, the more money you're going to make. And two, why would you want to learn by yourself if you can have somebody on your side that has already seen those problems, that has already fixed those problems, and that can help you do it much faster, much easier, making a lot more money and having a lot more fun? You, you put a good argument together there for me. You really do. The last thing I want to congratulate you on is this, is that you're willing to share your story. You know, a lot of people, when they get successful, they kind of want to hide under a bushel and don't want the world to know about it. I want you to be out there telling the world, buddy, because I think that more people will learn from your success than, than you can imagine. And as we keep sharing this podcast, I want to make sure more people learn. I want to ask you one final question uh, that, that is always something I ask on my podcast. If there was anything that you would do different, was there something you would do different? What would it be? Not to sound cliche, as, as much as I love my coach, I would have hired a coach much sooner because you, it would have made my journey a lot easier, simpler, more profitable, and more fun. Yeah. I always put it real interesting because people say to me, Brad, how would you do it differently? And I say, I would have just gone faster. I would have got into business myself <laughs> earlier. I would have gone faster and harder. I wouldn't have doubted myself so much. I'm not, did you ever struggle with that one, like doubting yourself and going, I don't know, I'm not sure? What to, did you ever struggle with that one? Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I, it, we all still struggle with it, right? The self-doubt that we have. Yeah. And what helps me tremendously with that, Brad, is to associate with people who are more successful than you. Yeah. Because then they put those doubts into perspective and you realize, and I don't know if I can swear that it's just bullshit. Yeah. Oh, we can. And just get over <laughs> it and do it. You know, it's an interesting one. I, I get in trouble with my staff and I always say to them on my podcast, is, listen, if my mom listens to this, I don't want to get in trouble for my mom. But, you know, mom understands one very simple thing. A lot of the things that go on in people's head is just plain bullshit. A lot of the stories right. we tell ourselves about how we're going to fail or we could fail or this or all that stuff is just plain. It's just head trash. 
And the challenge for a lot of people is they only hang out with other people who've got head trash too, and therefore they stay exactly. stuck in that mode. Abe Schweitzer, exactly. Techne Architectural Firm, San Diego. Buddy, great to see you out there rocking it, kicking, it, kicking big goals. I'm a fan. Thanks for sharing your lessons with us here today. Really appreciate it. Appreciate it.